Hello you lovely people and welcome to another video. Inflation has had us in her grip for more than three years now and although in general inflation is going down here in Germany, the prices for groceries have still gone up in March of 2024. I wanted to know if it is still possible to live on a very tight budget. Is it possible to live on 10 euros a week? Well, I tried. And if I succeeded, we shall find out together. For my shopping, I went to the supermarket Edeka because first of all, I knew that they had Barilla pasta on sale for 88 cents and they also had a coupon for a liter of organic milk and all you had to do was buy something worth more than five euros. I found the milk at the supermarket and it would have cost one euro and 15 cents, but with a coupon it was for free. I also bought some red lentils, some sour cream, I bought tomatoes in a can where the organic version was for some reason cheaper than the regular one. I bought some yeast and also some carrots, some onions and some loose garlic. You cannot get these vegetables loose in every supermarket so you have to find specific ones but at Edeka it is usually possible. All of these Veggies only costs a few cents. Um, if you had bought the bigger package, it would have been much more expensive. I wanted to buy one single potato, but as you can see, all of the potatoes were in bigger packages, so I opted not to buy one. I needed some tomato paste as well, and also some flour and some apples. The apples were actually too expensive at Edeka, which is why I went to Netto. And there were different options. The cheapest one was one euro and 49 cents, up to uh, three euros approximately for the kilo. Last item on my list was some flour for 65 cents for a kilo. And this is all the food we have for this week and not more. I bought a box of pasta for 88 cents, a bag of red lentils, organic for one euro and 65 cents. These are 500 grams. These are also 500 grams. Now, interesting, the red lentils, the organic red lentils were cheaper than the regular red lentils. Don't ask me why, but that's a fact. That's why I bought the organic ones. I also bought a, a bag of flour for 65 cents, a can of chunked tomatoes, also organic and also cheaper than all the other ones. Don't ask me why, 75 cents. Then uh, yeast, pack of five sachets for 75 cents, three onions for, let me check, 90 cents, a bulb of garlic for 44 cents, three carrots for 49 cents, and three little tins of tomato paste for 25 cents each. Interesting, together, these are 210 grams and that is cheaper than one tube of 200 grams of tomato paste, which would have cost, well, this cost 75 cents and the tube would have cost more than a euro. So always check for the price per ounce or in this case, price per kilogram. Then this milk here, was totally free. It would have cost one euro and 15 cents, but since I had a coupon, I got it for free and it's organic. Get that. And apart from that, I bought a kilo of apples. Now, all of this together, everything except for the apples was around eight euros. So I knew that I had two euros left. And I could have gotten cheaper apples, a kilo for 1.49 or 1.59, but these are Brayburn apples from Germany. And I love Brayburn apples. It's my favorite apple in the world. There are no better apples anywhere. Just don't fight with me on this. My opinion, Brayburns are the best. So instead of buying 
the cheaper ones, I bought the Brayburn apples for one euro and 99 cents. And that means that all of this together cost me nine euros and 90 cents, except for the flowers. Nine euros and 90 cents. And now we'll have to see if this is enough food for a whole week. For breakfast this week, we're gonna make Hefezopf, which is the German word for challa or sweet yeast braid, as I have learned on one of my last videos. So what we need is flour, milk, yeast, and then salt, sugar, and either margarine or butter or vegan butter, whatever you have at home. And I think sugar, salt, and some kind of uh, fat is always in every pantry. To make the Hefezopf, we will use the Thermomix, which is a brilliant kitchen machine with a little computer that has a lot of recipes inside. And one of these recipes is Hefezopf. And um, it just guides you through what you have to do. Actually, you don't need a Thermomix to make it, but it makes it so much easier. So it always says here, start cooking. We're going to do that. And then it tells you what you have to do. Um, this step, I'll just hop over because I can do that later. Uh, first, we need 300 grams of milk. Now, that has an included scale. So you just need to put in the milk and it just weighs it. So you see here to the left, tells you when it reached 300 grams. 300 grams and two, but that's okay. Next, we need 20 to 60 grams of sugar. 20 to 60 grams of sugar, it says these are 33 grams. I think that should do the trick. Next thing, 50 grams of butter. I will add just vegan butter because that's what I usually have at home but you could also use just margarine I think it's the cheapest option um, possibly you could just use some kind of oil I would not use olive oil but neutral oils like sunflower seed oil for example I'm very sure you could use that too okay that's 55 grams that's fine you don't you really need the exact like grams now we need eight grams of yeast which would be approximately one of these sachets here Ugh. sorry focus focus there it says seven grams so the recipe says eight grams, but seven grams is totally fine. We'll just put that in. Then we need, oh, I need to put in, it says to put on the lid. Yeah. See this here it says put on the lid and then next step. And then it says to put this here on two uh there you, you can see here the numbers we'll put that on two and then it goes for three minutes and then we can do the next step and now it says to add 550 grams of flour now the thermomix by the way i nothing sponsored and i'm not getting anything out of this but this is an awesome machine there's not only a scale in there, it also mixes, like it's very sharp blades, like a, like a high powered mixer, like, a, what is it, what you guys always have over there, the Vitamix, Vitamix, it can do anything a Vitamix can do, I'm very sure of it, and it also cooks, so it heats up stuff, so you can make soups in that, so I'm a big fan of that machine, it's also extremely expensive, but it's great, anyways, enough advertising, let's put in the flour. I'm just always having a look at the uh, at the scale. Okay, maybe there. Ooh, that 
was a bit too much. But not to worry, because I can take off something from the top. Yeah, that's now four, 540 grams. That's fine. Next step, a bit of salt. A, it says a teaspoon of salt. That's approximately a teaspoon. And then we put on the lid again. And now it does all the rest. It kneads the dough. And we just wait until it's finished. Next step, put the dough in a bowl that has been oiled a little bit. And I already did that. Uh, the dough gets out of that Thermomix very easily. It's It doesn't stick to the bowl or anything. It's very clean. But the best thing is, even if it was totally dirty, that thing here has a self-cleaning program. I love that. Uh, anyways, here is the dough in the bowl. I oiled it with a bit of sunflower seed oil just to make sure that it doesn't stick to the bowl. And you don't need to put like cling film over it. Just use a dishcloth. That's all you need. And I will leave that um, as the Thermomix says, just leave it for an hour until it has doubled its volume. Should be somewhere warm. Don't put it on the balcony if it's cold outside. Just leave it in the kitchen for an hour and we'll check on it then. This is what the yeast dough looks after about an hour. It's doubled its volume at least. And now we will take it, put it on the surface, make sure it's uh, there's a little bit of flour on your work surface, otherwise the dough will stick. We will take this, divide it into three different parts, roll them out and make a braid. Ta-da! That's the yeast braid. And now it needs to rest another 30 minutes until we can put it into the oven. Now another 30 minutes have passed and you can see again the Hefetopf doubled its volume approximately and you could just coat the top with a little bit of egg um, but I'm not going to do that because first of all we don't have eggs in the budget and second of all I don't think it's necessary. You could also put raisins in the dough, I didn't do that either um, and I don't really need it. I mean I do eat raisins but I don't need them. So this goes in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, which is around 360 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that, for half an hour, and then it should be done. Fresh out of the oven. Nice, nice crust, and maybe a little too dark. I think this was in half an hour, and it could have maybe like 25 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes might have been enough. It's still okay. Color is still okay. I like it. But maybe a, a, a touch too dark. But it will still be delicious. Now I think I have to say a few words about breakfast here. Because I think breakfast is a very different thing here in Germany compared to other places. I know that in the Anglo-Saxon world, in the UK and in the US, as far as I understand it, breakfast is a big deal. You have lots of different things, hearty things like eggs and bacon and porridge and baked beans or uh, pancakes. Here in Germany, it's not like that. For most Germans, breakfast is a small affair. You usually have a cup of coffee or tea and maybe a slice of bread with some uh, butter or margarine and jam or honey. Maybe a small bowl of muesli, but nothing else. As opposed to lunch, which I understand is, in the Anglo-Saxon world, a small thing like a sandwich or maybe a little salad, as opposed to Germany, where lunch is a full-grown meal. You know, really a big meal like pasta or schnitzel and, um, and dumplings or whatever. If you think that the yeast braid is not enough for breakfast, it is maybe because you have a different cultural experience here with food. <coughs> Excuse me. For Germans, and if any Germans watch this video, please back me up on this. 
Usually during the week, we really only have a slice of bread and, and a coffee. The weekends is different. In Germany, Saturday and Sunday, when the whole family comes together and, and has time, breakfast can be a really big thing. But during the week, it's not. Which means that this yeast braid is for me personally more than enough as breakfast for the whole week. Again, like in my last budget challenge video with the bread, uh, consider freezing half of the yeast braid and then defreezing it when you need it, otherwise it goes stale. But I personally just like to take a little bit of that yeast braid and not even put anything on it, but just dip it in my coffee. That is so good. With the remaining flour, the remaining milk, the sour cream that I forgot to show earlier, but it's part of the whole plan and part of the nine euros 90, don't worry. And with the apples, we will make another one of my favorite childhood meals, Maultaschen. There are different types of meals in Germany called Maultaschen. The most famous one are probably Schwäbische Maultaschen, Swabian Maultaschen, which means little dumplings filled with veggies or meat that you can put in soup. That's not what we make here. We make Bavarian Maultaschen. What we do is we make a pasta dough with the flour, just some water, some salt and some oil. And we will make that in the Thermomix as well. With the pasta dough, we will make little round shapes. We'll just roll out the dough and make little round discs where we will put a dollop of sour cream on top of it and spread that out. And then we will put um, cut up apples onto these little discs of dough. And then we will roll that up, put it in an oven safe dish with some uh, vegan butter or margarine underneath. And again, we'll, um, we will pour milk over it and then bake it in the oven. If you've seen my video living on 15 euros a week, I made something similar that I also love. But in my opinion, this is even better. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like later. This is what the Maltaschen looked like after 35 minutes. I looked at them after 30 minutes and they were just not brown enough at the top. So I gave them another five minutes. And I think that is for me the perfect color. If you like it darker, you could give them another five minutes, but I think that's pretty much perfect. There are eight Maltaschen in there. So one is usually not enough for me for one meal. I eat one and a half, but that means there are still five meals in there. Um, I honestly make that and eat it two days in a row for lunch and dinner. And then the day after that, even it keeps well in the fridge for a few days. So you don't need to worry if you want to reheat it, maybe add a little bit of milk so it doesn't get too dry. Otherwise it's really good in the fridge for three days. The second meal of the week will be red lentil bolognese. For that, we will chop up an onion, a few cloves of garlic and these two carrots in teeny tiny little bits. And then we will brown all of that up in a pan with a little bit of oil. We will add the tomato paste and let that brown up a bit as well. And then we will add 150 grams of red lentils, the chopped up tomatoes from the can, plus um, half a liter of veggie broth. And then we will let that simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. You can add any spices that you have. I think everybody has salt and pepper in their homes. If you have some Italian herbs, that would be great. And you can add some other stuff as well. Here, really put in as many spices as you like, whatever you have. But if you only have salt and pepper, that will be just fine. And the lentil bolognese makes five really big portions. This is a regular soup bowl, so you can see it's a, it's a good portion size. I just didn't have any more soup bowls, they are all in the dishwasher, which is why I used um, the regular plates there. It looks as if there's less on them, but it's, it's the same amount. And you can see it's a good lentils to pasta ratio. There's actually a lot of sauce for each one of these portions. The third meal of the week will be a red lentil soup. It's a Turkish dish called 
Merichimek Korbaza, please don't hate me if I'm saying this wrong, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but apparently it's a very popular dish in Turkey. What we're going to do for that is we will cut up the onion, a few cloves of garlic and a carrot, as fine as possible, plus this potato. You will have noticed I did not buy a potato for this budget challenge because there were no single potatoes to be had in the supermarket and I didn't want to buy a big package. So you can make this dish without the potato, but I still have this one potato from my last budget challenge, which means I will use it because otherwise it's going to waste. You can see that it's starting to grow here. We will just cut that off, peel it and chop it out as well. And then we will put all of these, the onions, the garlic, the carrot and the potato in a big pot with a little bit of oil and brown all of that up. Uh, plus 250 grams of lentils. These go in as well and we will all brown that up together for about five minutes. Then we will add about a liter of veggie broth and let that cook for 30 minutes. This in itself with salt and pepper would already be quite good. So if you don't have anything else, that is fine. But if you want to make it better, you can take the tomato paste and uh, put it in a pan with also some butter or oil or veggie butter, whatever you have, and brown that up and then add some paprika powder. Most commonly you would use sweet paprika powder and spicy paprika powder. You can omit that. You could also just add the tomato paste into the soup, it gives it more flavor. But if you have the paprika powder, you should do it because it tastes better. And then once the tomato paste and the spices are browned up, not they should not get dark, not too dark. Just leave it in the pan for a while, make sure it doesn't get too dark. But after a few minutes, you can add that to the soup and that will give it a lot more flavor. This is what the lentil soup looks when it's finished. Now you can actually puree that. Um, it is, it said so in the recipe, but we like soups usually a bit more chunky, which is why I didn't do that. So we have four big portions and it's lentils guys. That is basically protein. So this one bowl of that soup will keep you full for a long time. I tasted it without the butter and the tomato paste and the additional spices and it was already really good. It was kind of mild in flavor, but it was good. So if you don't have the additional spices, don't worry about it. But if you have them and add them, I have to admit it's delicious. I tried it already and it's really good. Kudos to the Turks for inventing this. It's awesome. But wait, we are not done yet. We still have about 100 grams of red lentils and we have an apple and we have an onion. And with that, we will make a salad. And here we have the finished salad. I tried it with just one grated apple in there and I felt like it could use another apple. So I cut up another apple and added it. But otherwise, it's just the lentils cooked, two apples, and an onion, also finely chopped. Salt, sugar, a little bit of pepper, um, oil and balsamic vinegar. I used olive oil, but you could use another oil as well. Uh, this is a rather large bowl. So I would say it's definitely one portion, could be two, because it's also quite filling with the lentils. But I mean, with the lentil bolognese and the lentil soup, and the maltaschen, it's, it's enough for the whole week, I think. And this is all we have left in terms of ingredients. Four sachets with yeast, a little tin of tomato paste, an apple, and one, two, three, four, four small cloves of garlic. Now, the apple can be just eaten as a snack at some point, that's no problem. Um, I could have added more garlic and more tomato paste to the dishes, but it wasn't necessary. So we could either deduct 25 cents from the total of 9 euros and 90 cents, or you can accept that I used the potato in exchange for that little tin of tomato paste.
And this is what we have in terms of waste. I would like to separate that into the good waste and the bad waste. The good waste is a paper bag for the flour and a paper box or a, a carton uh, for the pasta. That is recyclable. And then we have three tins for the tomato paste and the tomato chunks and this foil here also metal, aluminium, I suppose, that was on top of the sour cream cup. So this is also very well recyclable. No problems over here. Here, however, we have one plastic bag from the lentils, one plastic cup from the sour cream and the tetra pack. And that is, well, it is said that it is recyclable, but very often it ends up being burned. So this is the bad waste. But that's it for a whole week's worth of food. And honestly, guys, this is not too bad. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this video. I was honestly surprised at how much I was able to cook with only 10 euros, or strictly speaking, with less than 10 euros. Were these meals always the most nutritional and the healthiest meals ever? No, obviously not. But if you have to get by on a really small budget, these meals will keep you full for a week. And I think that is the most important part. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before I say goodbye, I would just like to mention that I now have the option of super thanks. In case you got value out of this video and you would like to say thank you, you could buy a super thanks. The button for that is underneath the video. Please only do that if you can spare the money. If you can't, then don't do it. Seriously. What is always free and what is really helpful to me is you could like this video, subscribe or maybe comment. I really appreciate that. It's totally for free and it helps out the channel. All right. Thank you again and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.